Good day. It's May 15th, 2014. And I decided to try to grow some hydroponic strawberries this year. I came across an interesting design uh, posted by Mike Walker, and I'll include his link below. Now, he did an excellent job uh, showing you how to, to prepare and cut the plastic for the top portion. So there's really no need for me to, to go through that process. He did an excellent job. So what I'll discuss are the changes that I made. One of the things uh, that I knew I wanted to change from the one that Mike built was how the tower was supported. The one thing on the Mike's design is that he uses six feet of a eight foot piece of tubing. So you, you basically lose two feet. So what I decided to do was I'm going to make two four foot towers and they are supported on a metal base. So Doing this in this manner, I can have 32 plants in two four-foot towers versus 16 plants in one six-foot tower that, that Mike came up with. So this may be a little more efficient, at least I hope so. The other thing that I like about this is that with the reservoir independent from the tower, I can, again, I make everything so I can disassemble it. I can take the tower out of the stand and or I can remove the bucket with, for, with the nutrients from the stand independently. So if I make more towers with the same setup, I can feed from a common reservoir. Now, I'll admit the bottom end of this got a little more complicated than I had hoped. Uh, just because I, I wanted to have paint strainer for a five gallon paint can. And because of my delivery system that I came up with, I was afraid that any particulate matter or whatever that got back down in the reservoir and pumped back up to the emitters it would plug them up. And I did have one instance when one got plugged up, so I decided to go this route. And what that caused me to do was to take the tube, the feed tube, and bring it out around and actually penetrate the bucket and feed the hose in that way. Whether this will work all right long term, it looks all right. So far, I did a couple hour test run with it just to see how the water flowed down through it. And the water flow is great. I'm very pleased on how that turned out. Now, <clears throat> to gain, again, I tried to make everything where I can take it apart and work on it. So this lower discharge tube here, I just have a little thumb screw here and it'll just drop away. You can pull the hose off the hose barb. And I have a, a feed pipe. If I can there's the feed pipe right there coming up through the bottom, and that runs all the way to the top. Uh, to remove the tower from the base, what I did, there's just a there's a cradle here that surrounds the base of the the tower. And on the back side here, I have a, a screw. Again, no tools required. I don't do tools anymore. I just take this screw out. Honest. Okay, the screw is out. So once the screw's out, again, one handed, I just tip the tower forward and it's free of the base and I just lift it out. And it comes in handy because I've made a bunch of changes to this and being able to 
separate it from the, the support is uh, really nice. I thought I'd just uh, show you here how easy this comes out of the, the base. Again, I've removed that screw from the back and I just tip the tower forward and lift it out of the cradle. And that's all there is to it. And obviously to put it back in there, I just set it back in, tip it up, put the screw back in, and it's all set to go. So I'll just take this out and set this on the saw horses. Okay. We're looking at the, the base of the tower, and I didn't see a need to glue this to the tube, so it's just free. And this is the hose barb that gets fed from the pump. And to take this off, I just push that bar back and it comes off. To make that threaded hole for that fitting, what I did was, first I took a hole saw and I cut a hole in the cap. Obviously it was a little smaller than the, the thread diameter. Then I took a piece of metal pipe that has the same thread as a plastic fitting and I clamped this in my bench vise. Then I took my torch and I heated the end of this uh, piece of pipe. I didn't make it hot enough where it would just melt through the plastic, but, and this is just another cap, what I, with it really warm, I just pushed it up against that hole and worked that thread into the plastic. And it worked really well. Now I cemented this area here really good so I didn't have any leaks, and I haven't seen any leaks at all on this entire unit. So there's one item. Now, and I agree with Mike, taking the, the printing off the pipe is nice. Uh, but you can do it a whole lot easier than using SOS pads. If you take a little acetone with a cloth, it just wipes it right off. It's gone. So that saves you that effort. To construct the holes in the pipe. Mike went and he, and he cut, the, cut the individual pieces and then he traced around the inside with a sharpie or a marker or something like that. And I, I got thinking about it and yeah you can do that but goodness there, there's 16 holes here that you have to do and if, if I make two of these, there's 32 holes. And to freehand 32 holes just didn't, it wasn't appealing to me. So what I ended up doing was I, I made a little jig. And here's that other four foot length of tubing that I have not done anything with yet. We're going to see how this works first. And I just made a template that I clamp onto the tube. And it took me two tries to get this right, okay? This is my first attempt, and it was just a little too big. And I practiced on a piece of scrap plywood to make sure before I did anything with the plastic. And my roto-zip tool, I made a custom collet that follows the pattern of this cutout, and it just works extremely well. Uh, 16 holes, once you get the, the thing laid out on the, the pipe, you can do 16 holes in about 20 minutes. It, it, that quick. Now just a, a note, I started with a standard roto-zip uh, bit and I don't know if it's not compatible with the plastic or not, but I started with a brand new bit and I got one hole cut out and the second hole the bit just broke. So what I wound up using is a tile cutting bit and it didn't seem to bother that at all. It did a pretty good job. So anytime I can 
make a template to make the process go easier, uh, that's what I do. Now, here's the, the real difference uh, in what I've done here is on the top end. The feed pipe comes all the way up to the top and what I've done is I've made a, a, a small manifold right, right in here. I took some of that scrap plastic from the holes and I cut little brackets here to support the hoses. But using this system I can angle and direct the flow right at the net cup. And I've tried this to make sure that the water delivery is correct and it works really good. And I'll, sh I'll show you that once I get it back outside. I was really pleased how this worked. And again, the reason I'm using the paint strainer in the bucket, if anything of any size gets up into this tubing or fittings, it's going to plug it up. So now to make that top portion here, and I, I got to do that twice also. Here's the first one I made. And again, there's that uh, T you can get at a hydroponic store, or you can buy a complete uh, drip irrigation kit from Harbor Freight for $19. You get 100 feet of tubing and everything else. And I cut that barb off right there. So it just left this portion. Then I uh, drilled a hole in the pipe and it was a really tight fit and I just used some super glue and pushed the fitting in and that is in there solid that does not move the only way that's going to come out of it is if I break it so I buggered up one hole so that's why I had to make it twice here's a good view looking down inside one of the holes uh, for the neck cups and you can see I have the hose right at the top of the nut cup. And if you look back down in there, you can see how I made those little brackets that hold the hose uh, in position. And I don't have to worry about them moving around or anything else. Uh, looking further down, you can see there's my delivery pipe running up from the, the bottom. Now, if I need to, I can disconnect these hoses and I can just pull this pipe here and I can withdraw the whole feed system right out of the, the tube if I need to do any maintenance or anything like that. But, and I, again, I made a little bracket out of the, what was left over from the holes. I just cut it and I glued it there as a support for that feed pipe. Okay, this is the final dress rehearsal before I go and buy some strawberry plants. The bucket is installed with the paint strainer. That seems to be working okay. And there's the tubes. As you can see, the, the waters or the nutrient solution will be delivered right to the net cup. If I grab it, and these are the lower uh, delivery tubes, and let's see if I can get up here. There is the upper delivery tubes. Ooh, hummingbirds. Ugh, hummingbirds are nuts. Well, the strawberry tower is finished and populated. I have to get a little more insulation for the bucket. Uh, it's all I had for right now. I did make one minor change. I added these little clips right here to each, to each opening. And what that does is it clips the bottom of the net pot and it really makes that uh, solid 
and it doesn't want to move around. With, without that clip in there, the that pot wanted to try to level itself. So that's why I decided to do that. And again, I just made those from scrap pieces from the, the caps. And I went with two varieties, mainly because that's all I had. This one is called Loran, and the other one's called Tristan. I'm not familiar with them. They're all, they're both uh, ever bearing. So we're going to give these a try. For nutrients, I really couldn't find anything even at the hydroponic store that I liked. So I, I'm using uh, Maxi Grow and just a little bit of Master Blend to, to boost up the potassium. I'm hoping it works good. I'll be very disappointed if uh, I don't get some good strawberries out of this. That's it for now. Take care and thanks for watching.